three days total, uh, building into what we have scheduled as an off day on Wednesday. So, um, you know, I was happy with uh, you know how today's practice went. Can you get any sense of, of the difference between a practice like today's and one from last training camp when everything was a bit more traditional? Is it, is it too early to say? No, it's uh, it's dramatically different. You know, um, not having uh, a month worth of a month's worth of uh, pickup games and knowledge that our guys have been playing and are in good shape, um, you know, makes you very cautious with uh, with how much that we're going to try to do. You know, early on in this camp, and uh, you know, we don't have our Exhibit Ten guys. We don't have some of the uh, you know coaching associates, interns that we typically have to throw into throw into drills. So, um, you know, we're very much more shorthanded than uh, we would have been this time last year. And, um, you know, we just got to make the best of it. This is what everybody uh, league-wide is, is uh, encountering. And, um, you know, we're, uh, we're adapting and we're going to make the best of it. Well, we, we uh, Quinn Cook just signed, so he has to go through uh, the protocols of, I think, six or seven days of testing still from the time he signed. So he'll be out for the first uh, few days of, of this week. I think he's, he's uh, going to be cleared on Thursday for Thursday's practice. Um, but we did not have him today, and we did not have a, a full, uh, full slate of the rest of the guys either. But I, I prefer not to get into how many guys were not here or which guys were not here. I honestly think it's it's going to be all year long. And look, every year, you know, you're you know, that's part of the coach's job is to measure this uh, with with whatever environment you know you're you're building up to. But um, you know, I think uh, the early stages is where you're going to feel it the most and uh, be concerned about it the most. Um, first week, two weeks, three weeks. You know, when you get into playing real games, you know, I think that first week of, of real regular season games. Uh, the intensity ramps up naturally, uh, so there's going to be a concern with how much you're doing then. Uh, but it will be something that we measure all year. All good. Hey, Frank. Um, at the end of the week with, with this game against the Clippers, um, obviously it's a preseason game, uh, but what are your goals? I mean, with the limitations that you have with the bodies on the board and the conditioning level, well, we're we're beginning. I mean, this is uh, this is the season now. You know, we have to put our system in. Uh, we got to you know build our, our our offensive system each day, build our coverages out, make sure everybody's on the same same page with that. And um, that first game is you know will be the the first opportunity to uh, try what we've been working on. You know, against an opponent just like any other year. Um, I, I do think that uh, there will be a, a, a big mindset to, um, you know, just preserve minutes with our regular season big minute guys as much as possible, and um, you know, just try to get uh, take the first step for our team uh, while staying healthy. without getting too specific um, how many, how much of your team you had. I mean, you said you didn't have a full roster. That could theoretically be you only had two players versus you had 13. Could you possibly contextualize how much of your team generally you had? And then two, are you at all able to prepare in any way for sort of the unpredictability of this time? Like, do you, kind of, do you have to approach this differently or do you build something into the way you're approaching training camp because you don't know if you're going to have everybody at all times? Um, and, and maybe does your experience starting off in the bubble help you? Uh, I, I do think uh, starting off in the bubble helped us for you know trying to manage this this phase right now. It, it's more uh, more like that second restart training camp uh, than the September training camp that we had last year. 
um, we will manage it uh, that type of way. And in terms of uh, contextual, con contextualizing uh, how many players we had, we, we did have most of our roster um, available for practice today. Good, good. Good. How much time or will you spend any time each day reminding guys about the COVID-19 protocols? You know, you paying attention to other teams like Portland have to shut down their facility, I think, for a day or two because they have some uh, the tests. For sure. You know, we are paying attention to uh, to other teams and, and really other leagues as well. You know, um, we're sort of new to the game. Uh, we, the NBA, are new to the game in terms of playing playing uh, professional sports outside of a bubble. Um, you know, so we've uh, we've been able to observe and, and learn lessons from baseball and uh, the NFL, college football, college basketball uh, about how things look. And um, you know, it's still going to be very new to us, but we are um, you know measuring that uh, you know with other sports and with other teams in our league. And we have already talked about, uh, you know, making sure that uh, our team follows the protocols for a variety of reasons. We do not want our guys uh, to to get sick, to get positive tests. Staff or players, we want to try to be as safe as possible. Uh, we do not want to uh, lose personnel uh, for not po following the protocols, and we certainly don't want to be uh, penalized uh, for any anybody on our program not following the protocols. So. Um, we're putting a heavy emphasis on uh, playing by the rules here and, um, you know, just for a variety of reasons. All right, we've got time for two more. Mark Medina, please. Hey, Frank, good to see you. Um, the fact that you guys have been accustomed in the bubble of playing without fans, uh, to what extent do you think that will make this process easier this season? And I guess what adjustments still will go into tail knowing the scope of that is? A lot bigger because you know you're playing the bigger arenas. Yeah, it's it's tough to say. You know, um, you know, I don't think we make any adjustments really, other than you know uh, the experience we had in the bubble. We know what it's like playing without fans. We know that uh, we have to generate our own energy from the bench, and um, you know that's just uh, that's how it was in the bubble. And I think it will be different. Uh, even though it's the same fanless environment, I think it will be different in, in these larger arenas. You know, it'll probably feel more unusual, uh, but we'll have to see uh, when that day comes. Last one for you, Alan Sliwa, please. Hey, Coach. Um, just uh, how much different is it during um, a regular season where, um, you know, I guess you could say training camp leaks into, obviously, preseason, uh, leaks into the regular season, um, is it that significant of a difference? Like, do you expect this year where maybe the first 10, 15, 20 games significantly different from just kind of getting your guys ready than previous seasons? Well, I, I do think that the, you know, the, the, the buildup, so to speak, will carry over into the regular season. You know, I, I think typically you have six or eight preseason games, you know, where, you know, you're building up. And then once you hit regular season, everybody's in, in – uh, Everybody's ready to go regular season minutes, et cetera. And I, I think, uh, you know, the nature of, of not really having uh, a normal off season uh, building up to this, guys are not playing pickup games for three, four weeks prior to camp. And, um, you know, having, you know, a lot of a shortened roster. Is